Hey, it's me, Doug, from the podcast. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know my audio is a little wonky for the first minute or so, and it fixes itself. Why? I have no idea. Anyway, enjoy the show. No, it's not just Cooper Flag. Brandon Miller also has a clip going viral, playing pretty well, practicing against Team USA. How good could Brandon Miller be next year among the shooting guards in the NBA? We'll discuss all of that and this. It, Let's go it steal is, an election. I, I, I like that. I, I do like, yes, this thing is rigged. You are Locked On Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cuz we live. Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free. We're available anywhere you get your pods. That includes YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time! Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. There's Doug Brands, and you can find him on his Substack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. There you can find subtext information. You should also follow him on Twitter at Doug Branson, L-O-H, and I'm Walker Mayo. Listen to me, WFNZ, every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. on Wes and Walker, 92.7 FM. Do you feel like I was a little liberal with the word viral when I said Brandon Miller's clip? Like, maybe locally viral? We're getting excited, but... I was going to mention it when you brought it up again. Yeah, what was it viral? Because it certainly hit my timeline, but I don't know that the uh, Bill Simmons or, you know, any of your NBA punditry, they were falling all over themselves to mention Cooper Flagg. I don't think anyone could be defined as falling all over themselves to mention Brandon Miller's pull-up midi. No, they were not. They were, you know, it's... uh... We love it, and that's not. I'm not insulting it in any way. I just want to be clear here. I loved it. I fell all over myself uh, to to appreciate that clip, what I'm saying is that nationally, you know, people still, uh, although people are starting to turn a little bit towards the Hornets are doing the right things, but um, but they're still generally not paying attention, which is fine. Well, I mean, and, and yeah, sleep on them, sleep on us, sleep on us. Yeah, we 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 want the chips, all of the chips, the chips on our shoulder. <laughs> no, Co- Cooper flag that is going viral. That I'm not using the term liberally. With Brandon, okay, yeah. But we live in our own little world here in Hornets land and there, uh, at least within the Hornets world. And the sicko-verse. The the sicko-verse. It was funny to see all the sickos raise their hand, say, hey, I was watching the 10 p.m. tip last night against Sacramento, too. Uh, Yeah, you, you are beautiful souls. You are beautiful sicko souls, and we appreciate you so. At least Brandon is looking good. We did have Tim Bontemps on Wes and Walker, Doug, and Timmy. he's covering team. Yeah. Yep. TB. <laughs> TB 12. Avocado milkshakes, Timmy, all that stuff. Yep. 100%. Tim Bontemps was covering some of those practices. And he said, look, we only get to watch about a five minute session. But he did know Charles Lee before because Tim has covered the Boston Celtics for quite some time. So mm-hmm. he developed a relationship with Charles Lee and he talked a little bit about Brandon Miller. Cooper Flag stole the show from all of the young guns going sure. against Team USA. He did say that Brandon is respected. He did talk about how Charles Lee was excited to take over this new role and and genuinely so. Like and and also Dougie discussed how this <laughs> this job was actually attractive, which is a, a fun radio question we often have for the vacancies whenever your team fires their guy and they're looking for a new coach. How attractive is the job? And you're right. NBA punditry they are starting to shift, change their reputation or the reputation of what they think the Hornets have just a little bit. And Brandon Miller is a huge reason why we get to see him get to his spots against Team USA, giving Anthony Edwards the shoulder, getting to his spot in the mid-range. Love to see it. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, all it took for the NBA punditry to finally start to come around was a change in ownership, a change in front office, a Dude. massive overhaul of the roster. <laughs> Three. I mean, Potential just... star drafted with second overall. Yeah, that's all right. Four. I mean, all it took was literally changing everything for people a to turn and 3-0 trip at the California Classic. That's five. Yeah, yeah it took a I lot. know. Uh, people are definitely paying attention to that. So, um, but back to, back to Brandon Miller. I, I love the clips. I mean, I think, um, you know, it, it – it, sort of fed into some things that we want to believe. I I don't know that I'm ready to fully believe that his like body is, is bigger. We'll definitely be on muscle watch. Um, But, you know, just giving that shoulder to Anthony Edwards, creating that separation, uh, getting, you know, getting through that screen. 
those are all things that when we actually get decent footage, you know, we will be paying attention to. And I don't, we may get that footage as soon as uh, this, this upcoming weekend, because we do have Vegas Summer League coming up. Brandon Miller is on the roster. I don't know if we're going to see him or not. Uh, but we could get a better look at him then. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited that he's a part of Team Select because I think he, just being around greatness is always going to be good for for a guy like that. He already has the right mentality. When You were mentioning that, um, that, that punditry is definitely on him, but I think players are too. And LeBron James was here. He mentioned, um, you know, how much he respected Brandon Miller's ethic and his work game or his work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's good. All around good. I love it. More. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish Lamelo was a part of this. I understand why he's not, but I wish he was. There, there's my take. Okay. Oh, oh no. Well, we we went there. We went we went with Lamelo. Now I wish he would be a part of it as well. It's a big deal, and the fact that it was just kind of a known. And maybe that's too strong, but it, it felt like a known that Brandon Miller was going to be a part of it. It makes all the sense in the world. If Brandon Miller wasn't a part of the U.S. Select team then we would have raised an eyebrow, right? And we did this with LaMelo too. I think that was a couple of years ago where it was a little questionable, but I, there might've been some injuries that he was going through. Um, maybe LaMelo didn't want to do it. I don't think we ever got anything on that. But um, yeah, Brandon being a part of it, you're right. I do like the fact that he is around all of this talent and he has the type of game that the vets respect. People love shot making. I think players love getting to that mid range, just getting to your spots and be able to knock down some of those shots. Very gifted offensively. It feels like the tie. Plus, if Paul George is the goat for all these younger players and people respect Paul George's game, right? Brandon has that type of game that players respect a ton. Not that NBA pundits don't, but the players, you know, they'll vote a very weird way when it comes to the All Star game, All NBA. Brandon seems like the, the type of guy that players absolutely love to watch play basketball. Uh, that is kind of an interesting wrinkle, the all-star, because the players do vote. And so, yes, being around some of these guys in any kind of capacity and showing off your game will we'll put you in the back of their mind when you're kind of on that fringe of whether you're going to make the all-star team or not. I mean, those things can matter around the margins. Uh, but for Brandon Miller, I think the most important thing that I'm seeing is that the dude wants to hoop. He loves to hoop, and he wants to do it alongside – the best players in the league, and that should be encouraging. I mean, you know, you compare that to Kawhi Leonard, who doesn't seem like he wants to hoop. You know, what kind of star do you want? I want the kind of star that wants to play every game possible, and and I think Brandon Miller um, showcased that certainly last season when he played through a few injuries, had to had to stay out a couple of games, but you know, came back immediately and started playing again. So you know, he's he's tough, and he wants to play against the best, and, and I think that's the mark of you know, future NBA star. Before we rank him compared to his peers at that specific position at shooting guard now, even though of course he has some versatility with Brandon, how much do you want to see him play in summer league? Especially now that you don't have Charles Lee, right? Because just for those that don't know, Charles Lee expected to take a backseat is not going to be the head coach in the Vegas session was three and zero at the classic not going to take over in I Vegas. I love, by the way, love that savvy move. You get your 3-0 yep. and, and you get the That's hell right. out of there. I love that move. <laughs> That's right. Josh Longstaff, the assistant that was hired over the offseason. Coach Longstaff will be the head coach for the Vegas session. And so now you don't have Charles Lee being the head coach for Brandon Miller. How much does that matter when it comes to how much you want to see Brandon Miller play in summer league? It doesn't matter at all. I mean, I'm I'm still skittish because I do worry about injuries and people have been injured in summer league before. So I'm skittish. Does it mean he shouldn't play? No. I mean, again, a young player, opportunity to get better, um, opportunity to make that summer league team function a little bit better because I don't think he would be going in there to score 20, you know, to score 30 points. But I think he could help that team play better. And in fact, we could see him in that role showcase a little bit more of his playmaking ability. See if he's like working on something. He could, you know, workshop something while he's there. You know, I, I don't necessarily need to see Brandon Miller play and lead the team and score a bunch of points. I think all of us are confident enough in his ability after seeing him for one season where he doesn't have anything to prove in Vegas, right? But he could help the team function better. So if he plays a game or two, you know, I'm fine with that, even though I'm skittish about the injuries. I don't really care about Charles Lee not coaching, 
because Brandon Miller already had time with Charles Lee in that camp session leading up to the California Classic. So he's already gotten his, you know, Charles Xavier Lee time. You know, he's, he's been part of the Young Mutants. He's been schooled mm-hmm. by Charles Xavier Lee. So I'm cool with that. Now it's, you know, now it's about getting him tuned up and keeping him healthy. Okay, let's move on. Coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. I actually have one more question that we can do in the next segment about what you saw from those NBA select clips, NBA team okay. select clips. All right, we'll, we'll have that. Plus, yeah, we'll get to the juicy question here. Could Brandon Miller vault his way up all the way into a top five spot among shooting guards in the NBA? We'll get to that in just a moment. Coming up next, Locked on Hornets. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. And prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. So it is great for procrastinators. You actually benefit when you procrastinate. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. And I've told you about the de- uh, the deals before. There's plenty of them. You have last-minute deals where you can save up to 60%, 60% off buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy theater, so it's not just sporting events. Flash deals where you can save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. And zone deals where you can save even more when you choose a section and let the game time choose the seats. So all in pricing, seat views, lowest price guarantee, game time ticket coverage along with all the deals. What are you waiting for? Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code L O C K E D O N N B A. Locked on NBA for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. More locked on Hornets ahead. Doug, you said you have a quick question for me. Sometimes these things don't go as quickly as we anticipate or just hope they would. Um, before we get to top five stuff, what you got? Uh, yes, because I think we, we probably. In service of talking about what we actually have, the bird in the hand in Brandon Miller, we probably buried the lead a little bit. If we were doing the get up first take show, we probably should have led with after everything that people saw that actually went viral from Cooper Flagg. The big question around the Hornets should be after, you know, getting the second overall pick and then the fourth overall pick and then or the sixth overall pick, excuse me, then should they tank for cooper flag oh well yeah this is yes this is a a, a big question you're right about <laughs> this was the juicy, the but again well, here's the thing we sir we I, I feel like we did a service to the sickos to the audience that actually wants to talk about what we have right now they are thirsty for this yeah. season and so i think we did the right thing but we're going to track back and do the first take thing which is should they tank for cooper flag well, th- this this could be at least a, a two segment portion of the show so we are m- maybe we do push this top five stuff a little bit further down but also here we are with the debate of what is national and what is local where nationally they would tell you that the Charlotte Hornets should tank for Cooper flag, but here they've made moves in the off season and they have players on the roster that don't make sense to tank in order to get that number one overall spot that it would take to land Cooper flag. So doesn't that run contrary to signing miles bridges to a $75 million deal? If you were going all in to try to get Cooper flag, then you let him walk. Totally. You try to sign and trade, even if the return isn't amazing. And maybe and maybe you still do that, Doug. Like, the other way to do it is what we've talked about before with the possibility of doing the P.J. Washington thing and trading him at the deadline before the NBA draft. You can't wait really to the offseason unless you're going right before the draft, so that's still possible. But maybe you do it at the deadline. But if he remains on the team for the entire next year going into the following season, then it runs contrary to trying to go get Cooper Flag. On top of that, you can't go into a season hoping that all of your players get injured again. (laughs) So Brandon, who was not injured all that much last year, and when he was out, he would come right back, which was pretty cool to see the fact that he had some durability. We know that LaMelo has not showed, uh, has not shown us durability the last couple of years. Same thing with Mark Williams. So if those guys are healthy, it does feel like a team that 
would get to a 30 win place, Mm -hmm. 34, whatever the over under will be 34. Maybe that's where we place it. So yeah, 34 is going to be a lottery team, but the odds still aren't great for you to go get that number one slot. And plus (laughs) this is not a roster that you are intentionally tanking. Maybe things go so poorly for them where guys don't step up. You suffer a third straight year of terrible injury luck. And then you still fall towards the basement. You fall down the stairs a little bit in the standings. But that's what happened last year, Doug. And what did they do? They got the sixth overall pick. Would you say that team was good last year? Hell no. No. So they won 20 games. And they still got the sixth overall pick. And that's about where they were supposed to select, except for maybe one spot later. It's number one for Cooper or nothing. And I will say there are a lot of talented prospects in this class. We're having the conversation surrounding Cooper, but this class is reminiscent of what you had two years ago with Wimby now. So you would still have a prize at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You would still have that. Still, if you're tanking for Cooper, no, the the decisions they've made have run contrary to that. And you're not going to be bad enough to compete with some of the other teams that are right below you. It, it doesn't make sense to me based on what you have right now, unless you trade miles, but even still things would have to go poorly. Yeah. The choice is pretty simple, right? You either you tank for Cooper flag at the expense of what you already have, what you know in LaMelo ball and Brandon Miller, because if you, if you were to intentionally move this direction into a losing zone, you're going to hurt those two players. I've said it multiple mm-hmm. times now. You've got to get these guys some playoff experience. <laughs> you know, I mean, you you just run down the stars in this league, and they all got playoff experience. If not their rookie season because they were part of good teams, they got it in the first couple of years. It's, you know, guys, so guys just don't turn into stars if they don't get playoff experience, you know, in their first five or six seasons um, unless they move somewhere else, right? So, that, that, those are the choices you have, and I think the Hornets are making the right choice because we don't live in a universe anymore where being the worst team in the NBA almost guarantees you a, a, a shot at that number one overall pick. The, the odds are not necessarily in your favor anymore to, to do that. So I think the NBA has done a good job at incentivizing winning in that way. So I think you're dead on with all of your takes, which is like they – look, if, if injuries happen at the beginning of the season, this team can pivot – towards Cooper flag if that becomes like the the thing that everyone sees in the mirror just like they did last season um that, and, and if this doesn't fit you know I think they've got enough maneuverability and the front office has already shown the ability to move guys both the ownership has committed to you know doing that in the last trade deadline and I think Jeff Peterson has shown an ability to get deals done that if at this trade deadline they needed to make that same pivot I think they could but honestly I think they're banking on not having to make that pivot and there, there's going to be some stiff competition, by the way, for the worst team in the league. Detroit is still bad, and I don't see them getting any better. Uh, they've got Portland, Washington. I mean, I just don't think you're going to be worse than those teams, honestly, even if you tried. Well, and, and, and here we are you know, going long on this, but this is it just people are asking about it, with, especially with Cooper Flagg being in the news like he is, and he's going to come to Durham, so we're going to get to watch him in the state of North Carolina. It's not going to go gonna away. Be, this storyline no, is not it, going not, to go away, that, that, which not, is why I hope I really I – am, I am begging the Hornets to get off to a good start because that would stamp – that would tamp down that conversation. It would say, all right, you know, the so Hornets seem like they've got something here. There's no reason to pivot away from that. So so the other two points that I have, you could one is you could look at this one of either two ways. One way is, well, hey, you have as good a shot to get to that number one slot in the NBA draft, even if you aren't the worst team. You have a good as good a shot as ever to get sure. that spot. Okay, that's true. Also, <laughs> That's true for every other team as well. Right. And then we can go ahead and ask Detroit, who has to endure all of this losing, and they still end up with a whole bunch of picks that fall outside of, what, the top two? They had Cade Cunningham. Congratulations. You still have the number four pick in Jaden Ivey. You get the five pick in Asar Thompson. They got the five pick this year. Like three straight years of being terrible and not getting to a top spot. So that's the other thing. But one more for me. If you do decide to pivot where things are going so terribly and you want to trade people at the deadline and you want to be sellers again, oh boy, terrible start, one. But that looks like more than just trading Miles Bridges, Doug. If, oh, yeah. you, you can you trade my if, if you have right. to tear it all down. Rebuild when when people are talking, well, the Hornets are rebuilding. I was saying this offseason, I was like, no, they're not. 
they're they're retooling because rebuilding means you're trading Lamella Ball. It means you're taking That's offers on thing. Brandon Miller. You know what that, I'm saying? That, yeah, and I I think you hold on. I don't think they're trading Brand. I would say that Brandon would still be pretty damn pretty close to untouchable. He would be untouchable for any other scenario, but if you just are trading everything, you're still holding on to your second, you know, a year and a half guy in, still at that archetype. But I do think everybody else not only would be on the table, but you're actively shopping them. I mean, that, that, which is it's, not it's happening. The, right. No, which is not happening. It's the trade Lamelo discussion that we're having at that point. That's what we're doing. It, it, that's really what it boils down to. And I don't expect that to happen. I don't think things are going to go so poorly where they have to make that shift and then go, Tank for Cooper Flag. I have a wood desk. I'm knocking on it just for the people at home. Fingers because, crossed. Yeah. A lot of variables. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, right. But to me, I think what what this discussion is, and the the question on the table is: Are the Hornets closer to whatever a top play in spot or six seed, or are they closer to being the worst team in the league? And although there's not a lot of evidence to support that this is any that they're close to a postseason berth. I think there is enough evidence of the talent that they have on the squad that should be getting better as the year goes on to say if that squad is healthy, they're closer to that postseason than they are to being the worst team in the league. Yeah. It could be real 50-50, though, with the injury luck. <laughs> but, but you're right. You're right. Well, it, no, no. It, it, that, it, that, it, listen, we've bulldozed the house. Yeah. There is no uh, no more poltergeist. Uh, we've we've got uh, you know we've got a, a Plotkin geist now. No more poltergeist. Oh, except wait. Except wait. Who's that? Steve Clifford. Oh, get out hey, of here, go. Steve. <laughs> Steve, go away. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, the Mitch Cup check. Well, Steve moved side. out of the house. Steve moved out of the house, and he moved into a condo down the street, which I think was a really smart move. If your house is haunted, you know, flip that bu- flip that baby, especially if you're in a good market, get a good price on it, and get the hell out. No, nobody's ever heard of a haunted condo. Maybe haunted apartment. But That's right. Is, do, do haunted condo? Ooh, yes, the scary movie, the haunted condo. Nobody's seeing that. No. That, that, that doesn't exist. Let's move on. One more segment to go coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. I promise the top five shooting guard conversation. We're going to get to that coming up next. Last segment. All right, Doug, I was listening to the Bill Simmons pod, uh, a guy that actually gave the Hornets the best compliment that he's given in a long time when he said the Hornets might actually know what they're doing now. Oh, man, music to my ears. Just not having to hear Hornets hate when I listen to Zach Lowe, Bill Simmons. Maybe it'll come a little bit later, but at least not right now with some of the decisions they've made. It was Bill Simmons and Ryan Rosillo discussing the top five shooting guards in the league, and and he was discussing this surrounding DeMar DeRozan and why the Kings might go after him. You look at the shooting guard position, DeRozan even still at this point might be a top five guy. Of course, what's the local angle? I wanted to make this about Brandon Miller. And Doug, on Wesson Walker two days ago, I, I had the bullet point, how much of next season is about the leap that Brandon Miller takes? Do we get from a 17 point per game guy on pretty good shooting to, I don't know, 23? Mm -hmm. Do we get to a 23 point per game guy that shoots 45% from the field, 38, 39 from three, something like that, where now you're starting to flirt with an all star appearance? That's good enough for you to get some attention, especially if you give, I don't know, five rebounds, maybe three, four assists, whatever, right? So if that's the case, is there a shot for him to vault himself up into a top five shooting guard slot? So let's go through the guys. I think the easy ones that are top three and clearly above Brandon, even next year, the guys that we can bank on being above him next year. Mm-hmm. Tell me if you disagree. Anthony Edwards. No. Sorry, your boy. Devin Snooker. Ugh. Devin Booker. And the regular season. If we're just talking regular season, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, Donovan Mitchell. Yep. I think that's, those your, th- that's your top three. And those are three. Order. Mm-hmm. We have this hybrid where they're listed at shooting guard on ESPN, but like James Harden is a point guard to me, straight up. I don't think he's a shooting guard. Okay, throwing him out. Jalen Brown is more of a forward. If you're going with the Celtics and their closing lineups, it's like Drew Holiday, it's Derek White. (laughs) See, I and love this strategy. If we're going, know, if we're going, know, if we're going to get Brandon Miller to put to to shooting guard, to top five shooting guard, what we have to do is eliminate <laughs> eliminate all of his competition by declaring them it, not shooting so guards. I love this. It, Let's go it steal is, an election. I, I I like that. I I do like. Yes, this thing is rigged. <laughs> let's let's stop the counts. 
um, on We're gonna the get fake mode. electors. We're going to do it all. But I, I, I do, as the famous Mac said, I do believe what I know is true. Um, <laughs> James Harden. Yes, that's what Mac well, said. As the famous Doug said, you win every argument uh, that, that's you true. know, you, 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 if, if you make an argument, you win it. Mm-hmm. You yeah, win every argument it, you make. So even Jason Tatum is the guy running point in the postseason. I just Jalen Brown's a forward to me. He's not a shooting guard. James Harden, point guard. So now you're talking about like DeMar DeRozan. Okay, I would still put DeRozan above Brandon Miller. Is that fair for you? Like right yes. now? Yes, yes. Right okay. now, sure. Yeah. I, I think next year he could vault himself into that, though, like above him. I think that that's a possibility. I mean, next year he's got the potential to get some all-star buzz. Like it's not, it's not out of the realm of possibility. So absolutely, he could vault himself above DeRozan. So he would have to jump DeMar DeRozan. Um, CJ McCollum, like I, I'm starting to look a little bit, but Brandon, I'm good. I'm good with Brandon and feel comfortable with saying Brandon would be a better player than him next year. I think that's possible. So now we're getting into like DeJounte Murray. Is he a point guard? Defensively, he's good. I, if you wanted to put him shooting guard, fine. Like he's still above Brandon to me. I think the conversation is there. Other than that, I mean, I'm I'm trying to dig deep. Devin Vassell, I mean, he could be in that same thing where he takes well, a jump. What you know? So the question I think becomes: Then do you get some hipstery defense picks like or or three and D picks like Desmond Bain, Austin Reeves? You know, do you have some folks saying, "Well, they give you something on both ends of the floor," yeah. you know, and that's where it's going to be really inherent on Brandon Miller to really soak up everything that Charles Lee has to offer in terms of improving him on the defensive end of the floor. And honestly, like I think his offense is going to be developing next year, but it'll be, it'll be coming to him way easier because he has such a variety of ways to score. I mean, you saw it in those team select clips, he's going to be scoring at all three levels. So I'm not worried about that, but like if he starts to also do things defensively that we haven't seen because that's where the potential is to do things that we haven't seen from him last season. It's going to be on the defensive end of the floor. And if he starts to do that, I think that's where he could pick up some major buzz for, for an all-star bid. By the way, I'm looking at the ESPN positions and how they have these guys lined up. Uh, Yeah. They have Brandon Miller as a power forward on ESPN. So just, just to we're, we're changing the positions but we're also changing brandon to get to small forward well, yeah he might even yeah it's, it, it's so weird yeah um, and it'll be interesting to see and well and that's i didn't want to blow i'm glad you said that because I, I didn't want to blow this discussion up before it got started because i really i saw when you came to the show and you wanted to talk about this i saw you just had a puppy dog look in your eyes you're really excited uh because this is perfect rank radio fodder yeah it's great right so i i know so i didn't want to blow it up but now that you mentioned that i will say that I think this entire discussion is a bit silly because are we doing shooting guard small fours? You even mentioned it with the Jalen Brown thing. I think we're just doing wings, right? Like who's the best wing? And yeah, it's going to be tougher to get Brandon Miller into a top five wing discussion. It's way Oh yeah, easier. he won't be there. Right. It's way easier to get him into a top five shooting guard discussion because I think as as much as we've lost definition on the power forward center discussion – honestly think we've lost it more on shooting guard we have no idea what a shooting guard is anymore i don't well, <clears throat> well i mean it, it's funny because we have those three anthony edwards devin booker donovan mitchell are pretty clearly defined as that it's like and small my, scores like small yeah, scores so but but that's my point i mean brandon was shooting guard last year we know we that's what he was you mm-hmm. had pj you had yeah. miles yeah like Gordon that's what he was bit, and so yeah. and and steve clifford right we've said this a million times but that's what he wanted him to play because of the positional size that he had at the two spot. I, I hear what you're saying for sure. Position, versatility, it, positionless basketball, all that stuff. I do want it to be representative, though, of Brandon being a bleeping dude. If we're talking about him in this kind of category, as soon as we get to year two, where guys can go to the all-star game, we're, we're talking about him as a top five player at a position where we can still define it somewhat, maybe in the next couple of years, it just, all right, everything's wing, whatever. I just wanted it to be representative of Brandon Miller taking that jump. That's a monster storyline next year. D- does he, does he stall out? Are we going with the improvement? It's not always linear phrase that everybody has loved to go with, or are we like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Monster, monster step. Forget the escalator. I mean, he took the elevator going straight up, not at an angle whatsoever. Yeah, it's really interesting with the Josh Green acquisition because you think, like, with his ability to guard multiple positions, 
that does allow you to like play Brandon at two, but because he's going to struggle to guard, I mean, he struggled to guard um, Jalen Brunson. He's going to struggle to guard Donovan Mitchell. He's going to struggle to guard Booker. Um, like, I don't know that I trust him on Edwards. So It's point of attack stuff, right? Like yeah. team defense, you trust them. Well, so, it, well, yeah. well, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah. well, if you don't trust him on other shooting guards, then is he a shooting guard? So that's that's my – so if, you're, if you've got Josh Green there uh, to be your small forward, then we're just calling Brandon a shooting guard. That's why I like wing way better. Well, first of all, I love wings. They're tasty. Uh, you know, dry rub, uh, put them in some buffalo sauce. I love wings in general. But I love the idea of wings in the NBA because then we can start talking about, was this a defensive wing? Is it, uh, you know, a shooting wing? You know, then we can start to break it down that way. That makes more sense in my brain than to no, say and, shooting and guard, small forward. No, I, I hear you. I do think defensively, I think, man <laughs> – I don't trust him on small forwards right now just because I think bully ball will push him all the way out of bounds. Power forwards. So I only I, trust him on power forwards. <laughs> I, 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 I still, I still trust him on shooting guards more because I feel like the length can do a better job of like him relying on the length, even if the quickness gets by him rather than the strength pushing Brandon Miller all the way out of bounds. And then we, we saw it in transition. Like I, I think Brandon Miller, if he's the lone guy, in transition and there's this two on one or even if there's this one on one we saw him go out of bounds so often doug where if he's chasing a guy down we we saw some monster blocks those are fun yeah it's if he goes to small forward and josh green starts and that's where he logs most of his minutes then you're right like you still have some versatility though where the starting lineup convos will have closer to the beginning of the season the two options that we have it's going to be tough do we go josh green two, brandon miller three or do we go Brandon Miller two, Miles three, Grant four. At those are the two options I'm looking at right now. And honestly, you know, this whole discussion has been really in the context of what we saw last season. What you're hoping for is that everything that we just said is slightly, if not entirely, wrong. That he comes in and is able to stay with Edwards, Booker, Mitchell, Brunson, Murray, McCollum in ways that shock us. You know, in ways that are fundamentally different than they were last season, it's certainly possible. And again, they've got the right coach. And again, mm -hmm. he has started early. You know what I'm saying? Like he looks like he's having a great summer. So, and and he was, you know, uh, he was going. I, I you couldn't. See, we didn't see it in reverse, right? We saw Edwards on on Miller, but we didn't see it in reverse. But one would have to think that you know he probably got some possessions um, on the flip side of that matchup too. So. I, I'm all, I'm anxious. I'm anxious to see Brandon Miller uh, play some play some defense here because I think it is the way his pathway to getting an All Star bid I think is paved on the defensive end of the floor. That'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us your first listen. We are free and available anywhere you get your pods. That includes YouTube. Make your second listen, Locked On Fantasy Basketball, to get sure. ready for the next following season. They do a great job, team breakdowns, position breakdowns. So first listen, Locked On Hornets. <laughs> Second listen, Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Are you laughing because I'm trying to dictate these people's listening schedule? Uh, no, I'm laughing because every time, you know, so Locked On Fantasy Basketball does this like big NBA preview. And every time I, mm -hmm. I go on there when Clifford is the coach, I just brace for Josh Lloyd to rip yes. me a new one about Clifford not playing young players and how because that affects fantasy. And so thankfully, thankfully, uh, I, I'm not, you know, like I, we've we've had the the – complex discussion about what our feelings on Steve Clifford. But there is one thing I'm thankful for and that he has moved on is that I don't have to face that conversation anymore that uh, he'll, well, have to it, pick, he'll have to pick on me for something else. Well, I mean, and he played, you know, he, he's maybe part of it was because of necessity, but he was playing Bryce McGowan's and Leaky Black last year and Brandon Miller. <laughs> that's, why he's, Brandon that's why he's gone. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Out of here. yeah. It's like, wait, I thought you guys wanted me to play young guys. I can't well, what's the anymore. deal? Yeah, I played Brandon Miller 40 minutes a game in the second half. Like, we had to ride him. Anyways, that'll do it. Thanks for making us your first listen. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow.